Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and we're gonna do a tour, a tool tour, a toolbox tour, whatever you wanna call it, of this re uh, rescue ranger here. So I recently set this up to do mobile mechanics. I've got the big truck there and uh, we've got both set up now. So what I did was I lined the bed of this. I put a bed liner in there, just to kind of roll on kind and uh, got this set up with its own set of tools. So you'll see in a second, there's a toolbox back here. I left the tarp on first because everybody's always like, oh, you don't care about your tools or your toolbox is not waterproof. Everything's gonna rust and get ruined. You're an idiot basically. So um, fact of the matter is it doesn't really rain out here in Utah, maybe a couple of times throughout the summer. Every day is like this. Take a look at the sky, not a cloud in sight. If there's ever a cloud and it does rain, it usually doesn't make it to the ground. It stays up in the mountains. And if it sprinkles, maybe it sprinkles out here a couple of times throughout the summer. So that's not an issue. Uh, this is how I keep everything in the back of the truck when I'm driving. Sometimes I'll pull the tarp past the toolbox. Otherwise it'll catch wind and I can't see out of the back window. But uh, if it's windy at night or something, I don't want the tarp to blow off. I'll throw my oil jugs around on top of that tarp to keep it weighted down. But it tucks up nicely and pretty secure uh, where this tarp doesn't come off very easy. Okay, so here's a look at the back of the truck, kind of what's underneath the tarp. Um, nothing has to be like real well organized, just kind of thrown back here. But I've got some sand to clean up the oil right here, just some oil cleanup sand. To keep my fluids in here, uh, some oil additives and cleaners and stuff like that. You know, we don't have to go through every single one, but high mileage stabilizer from Lucas, brake fluid, power steering fluid, brake cleaner, electric parts cleaner, PB blaster, more brake parts cleaner, some battery cleaner stuff. You know, I like to take care of batteries out here. That's our biggest problem in Utah with our no starts is usually corrosion on the battery. So got my jack over here. It's a three ton jack, the Harbor Freight one. Everybody likes this kind. Uh, over there right below you is four ton jack stands. So the jack stands are stronger than the jack. That way I know if the jack picks it up, those jack stands are gonna hold it. Uh, I've got a toolkit I stuff right here, but it kind of works its way around the bed of the truck or in that toolbox. Um, you know if I need it to be real secure but this one has all my sockets in it those are my go-to for sockets you know I might have like random oil jugs floating around from I just did an oil change and again to throw on top of this tarp um, this was a box of rags that just got left out but probably get rid of this cardboard now there's not too many towels in there but I like these boxes of towels because they dispense real nice wheel chocks over here I've got pig mat to clean up you know put it down when I'm doing an oil change in somebody's driveway uh, radiator fill funnel you know if I have other buckets of uh, coolant and stuff back here too jugs then they would just be underneath this tarp somewhere and zip ties that's all i have over here but i like to keep stuff you know beside the toolbox is a good place to store stuff and uh yeah that's that a couple of random pieces of trash i'll throw away later okay so i keep a case of waters back here because i get thirsty especially in the summer it's real hot um lots of little magnet trays i'll pull them out on jobs i use that magnet tray a lot i also have this bolster that i like all the tools I use are in the description down below and in the Amazon storefront as well, so you can check that out. Over here I keep cans that are halfway used. So I've got a carb cleaner and brake cleaner over here right now and a pair of gloves, but I'm, you know, latex gloves are hard to find and a bucket of hand, hand scrubbing towels right there. So that's all that, you know, random fluids that get stuffed on the side there and maybe behind it, I keep it pulled away just enough. And I've still got to bolt this down to the bed. I've got brackets, L brackets to bolt this to the bed. So obviously you can't pick this up, you know, You'd have to open this up, pull all the tools out to be able to pick it up. Nobody's going to run off with this, uh, but you know, once I bolt it down, it'll be even harder. So up here, I've got more magnet trays. These are my nice magnet trays I keep in here. Oh, and, and also this toolbox is pretty waterproof. Uh, if it's like a monsoon, it never rains hard here, but if it was a monsoon, water could probably get into some of the drawers. But uh, I've had in my old truck, the toolbox out in the rain a few times and uh, nothing ever got wet anyway. So. Up here, a tire patch kit. I've got, so there's some tools I don't keep in here. I keep all tools in there in the big UPS truck. Out back here, specialty tools and stuff like my Milwaukee air compressor and stuff that could get taken up and run away with real easy. I keep them locked up in there. If I need them for a job, I'll pull them out and put them in here. Uh, some other other tools as well, like the kinds you can get from the rental tool programs at the auto parts store. If I needed one, I have them in there, or I could also just borrow one from the auto parts store. But I've got a jump box up here. Keep my breaker bar up here because it doesn't fit in a drawer. You know, retrieval tools with a magnet and this pair of pliers for, uh, you know, radiator hoses, those big hose clamps. Uh, oh, a compression test kit as well. So just little, little odd and things that go up here that are kind of wide. Uh, this could probably go in the diagnosis drawer, but that's a spark plug gap measure, gap measure there. And that's the diagnosis drawer. So we'll start on the bottom over here. I've got a fuel pump and vacuum tester. 
Mexican air down here as well. So that test is for the vacuum and a pulley puller right there for power steering pulleys. That's a pretty common job I do, so I picked up one of those. And here's kind of my Diag drawer. I keep my scan tool in the big truck as well locked up, so if I need it for a job, pretty much every morning I just pull it out and put it in my truck. So power probe, spark tester, spark plug tester, battery tester, and multimeter. And I can do a lot of diagnosing with just those. Here's my plier drawer. I've got uh, vice grips in the back. Look these long pliers up here. Kind of keep them on the side, oil filter pliers. I don't use these as much. I don't do oil changes as a standalone service. And I try and not really do too many ever because I don't like doing oil changes. So kind of keep those in the back, but I used them this morning on my wife's car when I did an oil change. And then, yeah, just random assortment of pliers, you know, long reach and dikes there. Uh, these these are kind of like those Nipex pliers. I'd have gone back, if I go back in, I'd have actually got Nipex because they're just a couple dollars more than this pair. And I like the feel of those Nipex a lot better. And I know some people pronounce them differently, but that's how I call them. Um, yeah, so there's the pliers you see there. And then up here I got screwdrivers, uh, pry bars. I got to get a pair of pry bars, but I'm going to get the ones from Walmart because uh, they're real high quality and they've got a striking in on the back. So you can hit them with a hammer. These are gasket scrapers. Yeah, I want to do a little socket drivers there and some picks in here. So nothing too crazy as I go accumulating on in screwdrivers. They'll make it in there. Oh, here's my torque meter as well. I don't buy a, I don't actually buy a torque wrench. I like to use this adapter way more accurate and it also beeps when you get there so it's about 50 bucks links in the description down below if you're interested in that i use it on everything i'll never buy a torque wrench again so here i've got um you know different extensions for my sockets here these are all wobble extensions which are my favorite and then over here i've got a couple this kit was like as much as buying two of these little uh wobble we call them pig knuckles individually um so i just went ahead and bought this kit that has a couple different adapters and different um, length extensions in it anyways but i didn't need it uh, here I keep my battery stuff. I love to take care of batteries. So I've got some terminals there, cleaner. i got my battery cleaner stuff in there and uh, I've got to get a new can of silicone paste, but it's in my big truck. If I go out for a battery job or something, I'll just grab that for the next couple of days. Uh, this little bit driver is super handy. This one's my favorite. And a couple of different little uh, wrenches. This kit, this Duralast kit has wrenches in it. Uh, they're not flex head, so I always get a pair of flex head ratchets to go with that. And I need to get a half inch drive. They didn't have one at the store last time I was there. So I've got a three eighths and a quarter. Um, yeah, and a couple of crescent wrenches, big crescent wrenches, just for grabbing things that I don't have sockets big enough for. Down here, I like to keep, these are my impact sockets. These are standard. These are both metric, shallow and deep. And uh, O2 sensor socket, a couple of different things like that. Wobble little sockets here, these are nice. 14 millimeter spark plug sockets. I've got other spark plug sockets in this toolkit, super complete. 10 millimeter kit, this is 10 different 10 millimeter sockets for whenever I lose one, because you always do. And uh, here I've got some other bits as well. So this will make this will kind of fill up with random bits. You know, I get like crow's foot sockets or stuff like that for a job. Uh, they'll make it in this drawer, so there's still a bit of room to grow there. Um, some ratcheting wrenches, some swivel head ratcheting wrenches, flare nut wrenches, and another big set of combination wrenches. That's a complete set. So uh, any other odd and end wrenches? Once I get up, I think this goes up to like 24, 25. I'm missing a 24. That's more common than 25. So that's interesting. So I'll get a 24 and a 27 and uh, maybe like a 31 or 32 just to finish out that toolkit with the biggest wrenches. And then last door here, this is my bit driver set. So this has all the other random little star bits and stuff, uh, e-torques that you'll need. Um, so that kit's super complete. Cold punches, I've already used those plenty. I use those all the time. Little tool, tool little kits here like Eclipse, cotter pins, O-rings, hose clamps, stuff goes in there. That, those kinds of like, you know, fuses and stuff. I've got some old fashioned fuses there and some modern bus fuses and other fuses there and these little packs, some brushes for cleaning things and then my standard set of wrenches there. I don't use them often, so that's why they're in the bottom drawer. And RTV, I'll collect other little random things. I've got this vacuum hose here. When I collect other little random scrap pieces of hose and stuff, this kind of becomes the junk drawer down here. So. Uh, that's a look at the toolkit here. Again, anything that I don't have, like axle nut sockets, and I have them in my big truck there, I'll take them out for individual jobs. Or if there's something I find myself using a lot, um, I'll just get it and put it in here. But uh, as for now, that, that completes the kit. And uh, also, you know, this was my only setup for right now. What I advocate, you know, really well is just using the, the loan tool programs at your auto parts stores. You have to buy the tool outright, basically. Uh, so if it's a hundred dollar tool, you pay them a hundred dollars, you use the tool and then you bring it back and they'll reimburse you that hundred dollars. So 
uh, especially if you're growing, you know, you keep a hundred, couple hundred dollars in a fund to, you know, borrow tools with, you know, pay cash or whatever, go in there and borrow a tool for an individual job until you can save up and get that tool yourself and put it in your tool collection. But that's a great program. Uh, you know, if you have something that you don't use often or that you just can't afford yet, you know, like an, a radiator pressure test kit, it's huge. I wouldn't put one in this truck and take up all that space and it's 250 bucks. So I'll just go to the auto parts store every time and borrow that and uh, for things like that. So thanks for watching. I'm Ernest. If you like the video, consider subscribing, check out the other videos on the channel and uh, consider becoming a channel member to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode.